Hey guys, so what I have here is another one of these Ishin sort of beginner FPV kits and this is the Ishin Novice 3. Uh, it comes in a pretty big and actually pretty well done box. So let's do a little unboxing first and see what this 3 inch quad comes with um, when you buy it. So this is the Fly More combo which means it comes with six of these 450 milliamp hour 3S tattoo battery, it's, it costs $245 if you buy it on Banggood without coupons, probably um, there will be some coupons. If I find some, I'll link them below in the video description. So yeah, let's, let's take a look inside of this box. So first pretty interesting thing is the radio control this comes with. Now this is sort of an... Um, TBS Tango clone. This is a rebranded iRange radio. So there's been a very similar controller already on the market a while ago. Uh, I think it's discontinued, but this seems to be a, a version of this made by uh, by Ishin, and it does come with OpenTX, which is quite neat. Some old version of OpenTX, I guess, and it's got a little bug. So if you start up, it always gives you this um, warning screen. I have no idea how to how to remove this. Um, but it's actually not bad. Just push any buttons and you're good to go. Now, um, the ergonomics of this radio are kind of pretty good. So, I mean, it's a clone of the TBS. So, actually, I'm, I'm pinching and this really isn't doesn't feel bad in my hands. Also, if you're thumbing, pretty good. This is way better than the sort of um, PlayStation controller style uh, controller you had in the Novice 1 and 2, which was... I mean, barely usable for me. I had to use my uh, my regular Tyrannus to actually uh, test the other uh, other novice models properly because it just hardly was able to use the controller. But this one, I mean, while it yes, it does feel really cheap because it is cheap. I mean, don't expect too much. The whole the whole kit here: goggles, quad, batteries, charger, does only cost two hundred and fifty dollars. So you shouldn't expect too much but for the price this is actually rather decent the gimbals are okay they are a bit short travel for my taste but i mean they don't feel too cheap they are actually really kind of usable and this runs of a free s battery so uh you have to use one of those batteries in the radio controller one of the free s batteries but i mean of course you can use another one this isn't really really optimal because as you can see it barely fits in here and it's only 450 milliamp hours so it's going to get quite empty but I mean it will get you started. You can use one of the included batteries for this radio. Uh, so as far as I know, I mean one, one question for a beginner that will be quite, um, quite interesting is can you actually use this controller with other quads? Will it be, I mean, usable? beyond this this included model and it should yes it does free sky d8 so you can use this with free sky receivers um on other quads quads which uh is actually actually quite neat so this will get you started i think this is one of the one of the better beginner controllers you can get in one of those kits um really really kind of okay i guess for for what you pay but I mean, it's not something about. I would say um, I would really use this like a Tyrannus. This is something you're gonna still upgrade at at some point, but for the beginning, it's 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 decent, and I would say usable up to like an intermediate skill level as a pilot. Now let's look at the goggles. This comes with these are the EV eight hundred D. I already reviewed those goggles and these are actually the goggles I started with when I got into FPV and I think they are a pretty decent um, thing for a beginner. I mean they are very clunky, these things are huge on your face but I mean while they look completely ridiculous they are actually quite light so it, it, it feels okay on your, on your face, on your head and they have a pretty good fit. So at least on my face, um, they really don't feel that bad. The screen is nice and bright. Let me switch this on. I don't even know if they're, yeah. Uh, that's the screen. So you have a pretty big field of view in the screen. It's a, let me just quickly plug in the quad so you can see something in there.
So that's the antenna it comes with. And these are, in my opinion, yeah, these are okay goggles. I used these for like uh, three, the four, first three or four months I was in FPV. And um, these really aren't too bad. They are okay. I mean, the main advantage, in my opinion, if you're starting off with these, is that you can detach the screen. So sooner or later, if you stay in a hobby, you're gonna get uh, some fat sharks or maybe, maybe a DJI system. And what you can do in that case, and what I still do, is just remove, pop off the screen. And now you have something, so this is the, the other one I use. Now you have something you can have on the bench if you're like working on your quads and you wanna check something in the OSD or your camera. You have a sort of separate screen or you can give this to some spectators. So that's, uh, that's actually a, a pretty good option for a beginner goggle. So apart from the goggles, the controller and the quad, you do get everything you need to get started. So you get some pretty decent manuals. These really aren't bad. Usually manuals tend to be pretty good. You do get a charger. So pretty simple. You just plug in the power supply. I just noticed this only has a US plug. So if you're not in the US, you'll need an ad adapter for that. But um, you just plug this in the power supply. Plug in the balancer, plug in the charger, and it will automatically charge. This is very beginner friendly, very easy to do. Also, you can use this as a battery checker, so you can see at the moment this one's got 12.4 volts. Um, it's all the stuff to charge your goggles. Actually, you only need the USB cable that's in there to charge the goggles. Uh, that's one thing that's annoying about them, by the way. Uh, they come with this sort of weird plug here. There's no micro USB that would be more handy because often I forget to um, to get the right uh, right cable and don't have a micro. It doesn't have a micro USB to charge it. That's a bit annoying, but I mean, overall it's okay. You also do get some uh, a set of spare props or four spare props here. These are HQ props, fringe props. So this is all. Pretty neat and actually, I mean, the manuals are quite good, but you don't really need to, to use them. So, because uh, this is already bound to the radio controller, the, uh, the goggles are already on the right VTX channel. So I didn't, I didn't touch anything here. It was all already set up as soon as I plug in the quad. Now it's beeping, because um, on a radio controller you have the, the beeper here. So if you crash and you lose your quad to make it beep, you can switch between flight modes with this. So angle, horizon, and acro mode. I mean, I recommend staying in acro mode. And you can arm the quad with this button here. I don't know if it will arm right now on the bench. just try to arm it yeah <laughs> so acro mode is this one switch it all the way to yourself and then you can actually arm it um, all works pretty decently now so I think we're through all the equipment the quad comes with. So let's take a closer look at the construction of the quad and um, how it's built and all the components they put in there. All right, so that's the quad up close. What this is, this is a light three inch. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a, and uh, let me quickly adjust the camera here. Um, I wouldn't say this is a toothpick, it's a bit heavy for a toothpick. Let's quickly see how much it weighs so it's 66 grams dry with a battery uh, 101 grams and okay I mean this this is in the toothpick rate range actually I thought it was heavier I'm kind of surprised it's pretty light it's actually a very decent weight so how is it equipped? It comes with 1204. No, these are 1203. So quite interesting motor size. Rather small motors for 
a free inch 12 or free 5500 kv on 3s you can probably run this on 4s but i would not recommend that you'll have enough power on 3s you will not risk to break your uh, esc so that's probably the better better option now uh yeah 12 free motors it does come with hq props these are t3 by two so pretty decent props here the the frame construction itself this is a single bottom plate frame three millimeters thick um Decent stiffness, I would say. Maybe not the stiffest, but it's uh, it's okay. I think some of these some of these cutouts here. If we look at the frame construction up close, <laughs> this, these cutouts here are pretty unfortunate, in my opinion. Um, they seem to cost cost some stiffness. It's just I mean probably just more of a design thing, but these aren't really done in a way that um, that supports the the strength of of the quad now apart from that but i think it's gonna hold up okay it's, it seems quite robust so what we have in terms of electronics this is an all-in-one whoop board you see here that is um kind of flipped 45 degrees it's got an integrated free sky um sort of free sky compatible receiver and on top we have a vtx 400 milliwatt VTX with an integrated DVR, yes. So you can put a, let me switch this. You can put a, an SD card in here and record what the uh, the camera records. And I think this is a Cadex, and it's a Cadex EOS 2, which is an okay budget cam. So that should all work fine. And it's got a diversity receiver, by the way. So. This is better than most integra integrated receivers on those all-in-one boards. So you should have an okay range, I'll test that. But um, I mean, apart from that, nothing too special about it, except that the board is flipped and this top plate here. This top plate, I mean, it looks nice, it's golden. And it's actually not carbon fiber, this is a PCB. And on this PCB, they did put some LEDs and a buzzer. So the, the buzzer is kind of sitting on the top plate and the LEDs. I mean, the LEDs do look nice. Yes, but... Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. I mean, honestly, uh, this, this will not be as robust as a real carbon plate. And one issue I see is, look at this buzzer, how close it is to the VTX. So you got like... I would guess between two and three millimeters between this buzzer and the VTX. And if you really kind of crash into the top plate here and it bends or I mean, or doesn't even bend or break, but only flexes, it might be enough to smash your buzzer into the VTX and break it, which is very unfortunate. In my opinion, so they, and there's, there's plenty of space here in the rear, for example, to, to put the buzzer. They could have found a better way to do it. Is and while I think these LEDs look nice, I think it's very unfortunate that they are kind of compromising on the durability of this frame by using a PCB uh, top plate. But apart from that, I mean, it's it's a pretty decent. Um, uh, decent engineering they did here really really not bad uh, quality of the motors etc and all the electronics looks okay for for the price so i would say for a beginner in any case this is um more than enough to get you started okay so i just got back from um flying a couple of packs and i have some good news and some bad news <laughs> now first the good news this quad handles really well, so really nice tune, really in control. It, it's really good. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly um, quite impressed with the flight characteristics, and I didn't didn't even put my um, my usual rates on there, and immediately it was really pretty good. Now the other thing that sort of impressed me is this radio. Um, I mean, yes, it does feel kind of cheap, but the ergonomics are, I mean, at least for my hands, which aren't very, very big, um, are amazingly good. So I, 
I really, really liked how it feels. The gimbals are not too bad. So honestly, this is for me one, one of the most ergonomic controllers I, I ever had in my hands. Now, <sighs> of course, I can't really credit Ishin um, for this because, I mean, first of all, this chassis, this, this plastic um, injection mold thing here, is from another manufacturer and this manufacturer I range copied Team Black Sheep so it's not too much of a surprise that it's um, nice to hold it in your hand because they just you know, you know copied TBS and well now the bad news I don't even have DVR I didn't even got that far because um yeah on a first Let's say a real crash I had, I immediately broke the VTX, which is sort of what I feared. Uh, surprisingly, I don't think what happened is that I smashed the buzzer into the VTX. I already had some issues with this VTX out of the box, so I had weird freezes. And um, after having a crash, I mean, it wasn't that bad, honestly. It was just, a, let's say, a regular crash. What happened is I completely ejected the VTX antenna. It was gone. I had to put a new one on there. And I really recommend immediately the antenna you have to immediately zip tie this to the top light because you will rip it off in the first crash. And I ripped off one of the receiver antennas. So what you should do before you made in this, please do a little modification and take the receiver antennas and mount them to the frame with a zip tie and a shrink tube in this fashion here. So you just put a zip tie on there and you, you put the receivers in the shrink tube. This will not really affect how um, how good the range is. I mean, anyways, it's not a mid or long range quad, so it doesn't really matter. Please do this before you maiden your novice free because you will <laughs> immediately um, break these receiver antennas. But, um, I mean, everything looked okay so far, so I repaired the antennas, it was fine. One thing that was annoying is that these receiver antennas are not the standard Free Sky ones, so my connector didn't fit. Um, it's here, it's loose, so I, I couldn't really repair this. But everything looked fine, VTX worked found fine, and a really strange thing ha happened. So it looked fine while uh, just being armed, just sitting, and as soon as I hovered for a while, so I just reproduced this in my apartment. I just started to get this weird static and these weird uh, image freezes and whatever that is again. And that was what I saw previously when I had these strange, um, strange problems before crashing. So something must be wrong with my VTX. That's a pity. Um, I mean, overall, I think if just just to conclude on this. It's a really good overall package. Um, the radio controller is good. You get six batteries, which is great. You get everything you need. The goggles are pretty much solid. I mean, yes, this is not, um, nothing in here is fancy. Uh, nothing in here feels like super high quality, but I mean, it's decent. Everything works and it will get you started. And for the first couple of months, while you are in FPV, it's really good enough in my opinion. You will have a lot of fun with this and some of the stuff like um, the goggles as a spare screen and even the radio control is actually pretty decent. Um, it will serve maybe as a backup if you have another one. So it's not like you will buy the stuff and then just throw it away in uh, two or three months. It's still good enough to be of some use later on. So this in my opinion, really good starter package. Maybe I just had bad luck with the VTX or I mean, I have to say, okay, I crashed, and it was the main reason this thing didn't work anymore. But it flies very well, and if it doesn't turn out that these issues with the VTX are kind of systemic and occurring on a lot of these quads, then it's something I would actually really recommend to a beginner, um, because overall it's pretty good. So. Um, I'm maybe gonna go on a lookout a little bit on the internet to see if other people had this VTX issue. If that's not the case, I can actually um, recommend this uh, set without having too much doubts about it. All right, guys, I hope you found this interesting and useful. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.